us. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Amen. We're going to worship God. We're going to praise God with this very first song. Amen. Fire up. Fire up. Amen. Let's fire it up and worship God. Amen. Fire up. Fire up. Make it boom. The gift of God is in me. Fire up. Fire up. Make it boom. Fan it into a flame. No more time for sitting around. No procrastination And God has got a job for you It's time to take the nation Fire up, fire up Make it move If I've got a sin me oh, Fire up, fire up Make it move Fan it into a flame No more time for sitting around God has got a job for you It's time to take the nation It's fire up, fire up, fire up Make it burn, the gift of God is in me Fire up, fire up, make it burn And fan it into a flame No more time for sitting around No procrastination Yes, God has got a job for you It's time to take the nation Let's sing the next song Great and mighty is he Great and mighty is he And great and mighty is he A glowing glory ring in splendor Great and mighty is he Great and mighty is he And great and mighty is he Glowing glory, ringing splendor, great and mighty is he. Let us live, let us lift his name up high. Celebrate his praise, all we have seen our lives are worship him this wonderful morning yes oh god we worship you we lift you up high oh god we praise your holy name oh god this wonderful morning yes oh god lord we praise you and worship you amen we're gonna worship him with this new song amen uh, way make Promise keeper, 
light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here. You are here. Touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. Get a way maker, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, way maker, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Like in the darkness, my God, this is who you are. Waymaker, hallelujah. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Like in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Let's lift up our hands and do him under Let's worship our God. Hallelujah. This morning. Sunday. We worship you, Almighty God. Iki on the Sunday. Iko robo bobo Sunday. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, as we lift our hands up unto you, it's a sign of surrender, a sign of faith. Hallelujah. This morning, in this place, as we gather together this morning, we bring, dear God, our leadership before you, Pastor Great Mitchell, Pastor Joe Campbell, Pastor Ellen Nasir, all the area works before you, Almighty God, hallelujah, and every laborer, disciple, workers, every pastor before you, pastor's wife and family, children before you in the name of Jesus. Dear Father in heaven, we seek your divine haging and covering over us, Lord. Truly, desperately, we need you in these very days we are living in, whereby the Bible says the last days will be perilous times, dangerous times. And we need you, dear Father in heaven, to guard our mind, to guard our hearts, to guard, O oh Lord, our thoughts, O oh God, that we and all that is in us will always be pleasing unto your sight. Our hearts as well will always be right before you, pure before you, O oh God, free from all carnality, free from all sinful nature. Father, this morning we come and we cry unto you for our loved ones, our family members who are not saved. Dear God, open the eyes of their heart. And for every backslider, we pray for them who once know you and knew you and walked with you, but somehow, Lord, their passion for you have uh, gone from their hearts. We pray, refresh, hallelujah, turn them back around for you, O God. This morning we bring God, hallelujah, this morning service and every one of us before you as we gathered in your name. Bless us, God, we pray, hallelujah. As you bless Jabez, bless us, God, hallelujah. Enlarge our territory, O God. 
Lay your hands upon our hands and lead us and guide us, O Lord, God Almighty. And this morning again, Lord, we thank you. We want to bring especially the sister, Sister Kush Boo, and we pray for her. You show yourself real to her many years ago. And God, we pray for her that, God, your will be done in her. And uh, bless this morning's service in Jesus Christ's most mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's give a big clap to the Lord. Praise God. Just turn around and just uh, greet one another. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And good to see all of you this morning. Amen. So I want to give you the church announcement. Uh, tonight we will have service uh, at 7 p.m. here. Okay, and we will continue back our midweek worship service at 7 uh, p.m. as well. Uh, Saturday night, we just started back our Tamil service last night. And uh, there were 10 of us in church. And we praise God for that at 7.30 Saturday night. So next month, we will have a guest speaker on a Sunday morning. I'm not, he has not given me the dates yet. Uh, which Sunday morning he'll be coming. I will keep you informed. But we will have a guest speaker on a Sunday morning service. Amen. So before we move on, uh, we're going to hear a very great testimony. Amen. And it's going to come from Brother Daniel. Amen. Let's welcome Brother Daniel. Amen. Uh, amen. Uh, first, I want to thank God amen, for being here. Amen. Uh, it's grace and mercy. Uh, thanks, Pastor, for the opportunity to uh, share my testimony. So, I uh, guess uh, many of you have known that uh, I've been di uh, diagnosed uh, with uh, lymphoma. Uh, lymphoma is a type of, of cancer, blood cancer. So, there's a lot of lymphoma the type. <laughs> uh, mine is... Uh, okay, sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, diagnosed with, previously uh, I was diagnosed with uh, lymphoma, uh, high grade B cell, uh, high grade B cell. So, there's a lot of, almost 100 types of lymphoma. So, that's one of it. I, I, I do not know what is lymphoma until <laughs> I, I had it. So, then, uh, but uh, how it happens is uh, uh, basically uh, when during the MCO, uh, when I'm back from the aerospace camp, I had a very pain. At my chest, at my chest. So I thought it's a gas reflux. So I went for to few clinics, lah. And then they just give me medicine because at time MCO they cannot uh, ask me to refer to hospital because of the COVID. So they have sort of very limited space and all that. So they keep giving me all this medicine for gas reflux. But I I I had difficulty in breathing also as well. So uh, because my, my chest here becomes swollen up to my neck, and then. Uh, after that, one of my friends recommended me the clinic and took my blood test, said that there's something in my pancreas. So, after, uh, one of the days that I really had a very uh, long duration, to br uh, hard to breathe, you know. So, I was very panicked. So, I said, I need to go to the hospital. I went to HKL and from there, I admitted. So, um, so the doctor uh, admitted me, the, the what doctor, is like he, he knows that I had lymphoma, but we, they need to do the biopsy. So I had the bio, uh, biopsy, uh, so they, they took the sample from my, near to my heart there, <laughs> and then, uh, uh, then the result will be out in one week, la, one week time, la, for H HKL. Um, but in the meantime, uh, you know, the church members, pastor has come and visited us, so, uh, you know, I, that time I was uh, backsliders, you know, my heart wasn't right, so I, I pastor led me into repentance of prayers, and uh, get my heart right, you know, ma many things that I did, you know, it's not right in the sight of God. So, you know, many things like, you know, tattoos, uh, uh, how to say it, angers, egos, pride, and all that. Lah. So, get my heart right with God. Uh, so, uh, during waiting for the, bio uh, the, the result of the biopsy, uh, I, had a, I had a bleeding. So, one of the day, I went at night, I went to the toilet, I went to pass motion, then suddenly the blood came out. I do not realize that's a blood until I woke up and then I was <laughs> very dizzy and then I fainted in the toilet and then I woke up again. Uh, then I just tried to you know shout the doc the nurse to pull me out. So it was a complicated cases that I keep bleeding every two days once and then they put me uh, 
uh, trans uh, what you uh, the blood and new blood uh, transfusion. So at least six pints of blood, you know. So um, until uh, one of the day that uh, my arms, because of the mass, uh, the lymphoma mass is uh, is getting bigger. Then uh, my my arms also all are already swollen. So the doctor plans to put at the at my near my pelvis there lah. There's a line. Um, when I when I went to that that uh, that room, when they started to poke me, my BP dropped. So BP dropped tremendously. I very hard to breathe. It's like I'm it's like I'm uh, gasping for air. So it's like I'm half. Then uh, how to say? It? The doctor said, Daniel, don't 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 sleep. You know, the doctor is a bit panicked. I, I can I, I I can see, but I just I can't speak because I'm I was uh, very hard to breathe. And then the doctor put me oxygen, and then. <laughs> And then uh, the the doctor said it's the family here. You know when they say that, it's very the the <laughs> it's not some very nice words to hear, like, You know when he says it's the family here or what. So they were panicked, and more and more doctors came from all departments. You know they, they was the room was so packed. I remember I was vomiting. Uh, they were so panicked because my when they keep putting the blood, I keep pouring out all the blood. You know so. And uh, all that, uh, but that's one thing that I did. Uh, that that I I remember I I spoke this word, the Bible was, "I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord." So uh, Psalm 118 verse 17, Pastor shared to me when he visited me. So I just only just can I can't speak, but I only can just memorize the word, memorize the word. So, but I have calmness because before that, actually I was afraid to die. But when I keep speaking the word, I had calm. You know, whether I go or whether I don't go, you know, I'm like. I'm still calm, so he transferred me to other room, and uh, and then uh, my parents, my dad was there, Karen and Jasmine, they hold my hand, they they pray, and then they said, you know, all things will be alright. So at the end of the day, the doctor put me to sleep, and I woke up. I was in the ICU, you know, I incubated <laughs> all the. They finally managed to put it to my pelvis, you know, all the lines to my nose, to my mouth, <laughs> to everywhere. Then and then uh, I was five days in a. I see you. Then I show signs of improvement, and then they uh, uh, transfer me to another ward. But the, my stool is still bleeding. Uh, they call it Malina. It's still bleeding, and uh, until the blood stops, then I can transfer to Ampang Hospital for uh, chemo. But but after several days, thanks God, the stool was brown and uh, a good result. Then finally, I was so excited, you know, I said, I can't wait to start for chemo. But <laughs> I didn't know that chemo is another battle. So then I then they transferred me to Ampang. So from there, you know, I completed uh, all the chemo session last year with a transplant. So around eight, eight cycles of chemos plus one, nine, nine chemo cycles plus transplant. So by the end of December, I, I completed. So, and then a uh, few days back, uh, four days back, uh, I did... Uh, I mean, I did a scan on the January. Uh, then a few days back, I got a result of the scan. La. So the doctor say uh, to me la, that uh, when I praise and thanks God uh, that uh, I have no more uh, how to say uh, life uh, cancer cell anymore in my body. Uh, that I was so happy, <laughs> you know. And uh, that uh, you know, I just want to thank you to all my the church members, uh, to all of you, you know, for your prayers, your support. Your there, you know, your visit and uh, your prayers, every, your message, you know, uh, you send all the encouragement words and all that, your words have really helped me. You know, I, I couldn't go through all this alone, but, you know, from there you have prayed, you always, con your concerns, amen, you're caring, church members and pastor. Thank you so much for, for all that you, you have done, uh, your prayers, your thoughts, you know, for this. And I just want to thank God again for all this great uh, miracle. I still have to go for treatment, radiotherapy, but I always believe that everything all is in God's hand. Thank you so much. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Brother Daniel. Amen. Still remember that day uh, we visited him and uh, Psalms 118 was 17. Those are what we gave him to stand on. I will not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord. That is in Psalms 118 was 17. Amen. So if you are in a fearful situation, uh, life-threatening situation, 
Psalms 118, verse 17. Amen. Let's bow our heads. We want to receive our giving. Amen. And uh, let's give to the work of the Lord. And let's give willingly unto God this morning our offering. Amen. Father God, thank you for your blessing, Father. Father, we come here today with a faithful heart and cheerful. Bless this tithes, offering, and pledge. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So the uh, Sunday, ch Sunday school children can follow Sister Juliet upstairs for your Sunday classes, amen. So... Uh, Let's turn to First John, uh, chapter four, verse eighteen. First John, chapter four, verse eighteen. Uh, we shall read together. First John, chapter four, verse number eighteen. Uh, one, two, three. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. One more time, there is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. If you live life long enough uh, this morning, you will come to realize that the path of life uh, is made up of many different uh, hurdles. Okay. Uh, my eldest sister, I think she is uh, watching live stream from Ipoh. And uh, she's one of my uh, favorite fans. Okay? She kind of always uh, follow me. I mean, uh, attends the Sunday morning service through live stream in Nipo. And, um, and uh, she uh, ran for the state of Perak uh, during her time in the 100 Herders uh, race. Okay? She... Um, has some photos of her running and also trophies of uh, her winning some of the 100 meters hurdle races. And uh, for the 100 meter hurdles, there are altogether 10 hurdles uh, with the height of two and a half feet. So, in order to win, finish the crossing line, um, that's what I read, okay, uh, that uh, there are 10 hurdles that uh, the runner have to overcome to finish the line to win and uh, each of the hurdles that uh, this runner runs is 33 inches, uh, two and a half feet and um, I think it is a very challenging um, a race uh, compared to just 100 meters or um, just the 100 meter race because uh, in the 100 meters there's 10 hurdles one need to overcome. But in any case, life is filled with hurdles or obstacles. And just when you cross one, there is another. And just as you cross uh, another one, then there is another. Okay? Another one awaits you after you have crossed another one. Some are high, some are low, some are big hurdles, some are small, some are great, some are tiny, some are painful, some are painless, some are hard, some are gentle, uh, some are soft, and some comes in the color red, some comes in the color black, some comes in multicolors. Uh, but life, if you have lived long enough, uh, you'll find that life is full of hurdles or obstacles. Now, in this many different hurdles, uh, I discover 
that one of the most challenging of hurdles comes in the form of a voice. Okay? And that voice is the voice of self-criticism. Uh, we understand from scriptures we are to uh, self-examine ourselves and uh, uh, we uh, find that in the word of God there are a number of scriptures that tells us to uh, examine our own life and on a regular basis. But uh, self-criticism is not about self-examination, um, okay? Self-examination uh, is something that's different, and, um, but self-criticism is something that is not very welcoming okay, compared to self-examination. The difference between self-examination and self-criticism is self-examination leads you to change and growth. When you begin to honestly examine your life, and you begin to look at your life, uh, what happened honestly, what will take place is that you will tend to change and you will tend to grow. But for self-criticism, when you criticize yourself, it leads to many times defeat and depression. Honest self-assessment efforts uh, us the opportunity to appreciate our situation. We then begin to make necessary adjustments in the way we speak, in the way we think, in the way we act. And then from there, we begin to plan how to move forward. Self-examination is about knowing our strength and knowing our weaknesses our likes and dislike, but self-criticism is more towards not knowing, but is more towards condemning okay, our weaknesses and uh, in the process condemn uh, our future as well. Self-examination is usually uh, a temporal measure, okay, a temporal action, uh, but it leads to positive progress where well, self-criticism, uh, you find, can be a very regular action towards self, which leads to self-defeat and also uh, stagnation. When one overemphasizes uh, and listen to the negative voice of criticism about oneself, one can cause oneself to spiral down instead of going up. You go down, and what you do is you damage your own future. You damage your future possibility of who God has made you or what God has planned for you. Because what we think of ourselves is what we will be. It is wise to not allow the voice of self-criticism to go out of control in your life because Defeat okay, and not victory will be the outcome. Now allow me to give you an example of what self-criticism looks like or sounds like. It looks like someone looking at the mirror with a hammer and smashing the one in the mirror he's looking at. It looks like that but the only thing is, instead of using a hammer, you use your inner voice as a hammer. You are stupid. You are a failure. That inner voice that speaks to self, you are good for nothing. You can never succeed. Our inner voice constantly gets us to enter into the lion cage of self-criticism. Constantly being hard towards yourself. Instead of finding a cure, our inner voice constantly speaks down, speaks ourselves down. Okay? By pointing to our weaknesses, by pointing to our failures, by pointing to the mistakes that we make, and when we allow that voice to become very, very loud, 
what it does is that it will drown that person into self-defeat. No greater hurdle is such a hurdle than our own inner voice becoming a critical critic, putting us down. No hurdle can be more uh, challenging, damaging than our own inner voice resisting our own or our effort, resisting every input we try to uh, uh, grow or we try to uh, uh, help to uh, raise it up and uh, then the unwelcome, unwelcome voice, inner voice of self-criticism. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, it says, Do not let unwholesome or uh, worthless words, <clears throat> do not let unwholesome or worthless words ever come out of your mouth. Now, Jesus teaches that what comes out from our mouth comes out from our heart. Okay? And Ephesians tells us, do not let worthless words or do not let your heart, worthless words that comes out from your heart, okay, speaks to your heart. Okay? But only such speech as is good for building up others according to the need and the occasion, so that it will be a blessing to those who hear. Okay? So let your inner heart hear words that are building you up, not words that are tearing you down. Okay? And this hurdle, okay? though many people on the outside, they look fine, they look good, they look well, you know, but on the inside of their heart, okay, for many people, this voice speaks to them. Now, we are here to look at the solution or the help to this hurdle. And we're going to look at three sources where we can find help for such a problem. And we're going to look to God the Father, God the Son, and to God the Holy Spirit. Firstly, from the Father is from our text here, and that is we're going to look, uh, we're going to we're going to look at His perfect love for us. Romans chapter five, verse number eight. The Scripture says, "But God commended His love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners." Christ died for us. I read that again. But God commended Romans 5 verse 8. His love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Let's give thought to what that verse says there, especially the word while we were yet sinners, God commended His love towards us. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. Amplified Bible version put it this way, but God clearly shows and proves His own love for us by the fact that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That scripture tells us that God did not wait until we were pure, until we were white, to prove His love for us. But while we were yet filled with dirt, while we were yet filled with stain, while we were hating and despising and self-condemning ourselves, God let His Son as a proof of His love to die for you and I. No, this morning, you and I are not grasshoppers. You and I are not worms, you know, fruitcake or basket case or failures. You are a proof of His love. The key here this morning in regards to the Father's love is to 
get yourself out from the inner voice of self-hate is to use the method of infusion, that is, infusing His love, the Father's love, into your heart. Okay? Infusion is the method of letting something breathe into you. Or in this case, let the love of the Father for you infuse you or penetrate into your heart, into how you see yourself, into how you speak about you yourself in the inside of you. Love is a powerful driving power that can drive out self-destructive inner conversation, inner dialogue. There are people talking to themselves. Okay? Nobody outside is listening or can hear what they are speaking, but God hears. And there are people talking to themselves. It is important if they do speak to themselves in the inside of them, it needs to be uh, words of edification, words of life, instead of words of self-destruction. Love, again, is a powerful driving power that can drive out this self-destructive in, in a dialogue or conversation one have with himself or herself, it is to look at yourself the way God looks at you through Romans chapter 5, verse 8. And when you do so, you're allowing the sweet, uh, smelling aroma of God's love to diffuse away the unhealthy smell of self-hate you have for yourself. When we allow His love, which is a perfect or complete love, to rub over our heart gradually and eventually, the transformative uh, love of God will dilute or will drown out the toxic or poisonous voice of the enemy that seeks your heart's attention. The love of God's love, the love of the Father's love has the ability to meet every pain, to meet every deficiency, to meet every struggle. Okay? Where you are being reasoned, it is a love that is perfect. It is a love that is complete. What I'm saying here to you is invites God's perfect love into your heart. Okay? And as surely as you do so, His love will gradually cause you to change the way you speak to yourself in the inside of your heart. Just two months ago, I did this myself and I told God, God, the Father, I need you, I need you to set straight your love. Your love is perfect love. I need you to saturate your love into my, my, my heart. My love, okay? Tan's love is not good enough, okay? My love is limited. I can only uh, go so far with this love. But your love, God the Father, is perfect love. And I believe that He has answered my prayer this morning. And if you do pray, and if you do seek His love, okay, the Father's love, it will help to transform you in the insight to the way, uh, to the words that you speak to yourself. Oh, look secondly at God the Son, Jesus Christ. And that is, He took upon Himself on our behalf through crucifixion the hard blows that comes upon our life. Every beating, every whipping upon his body, every punch, every spitting to his face, the spear that went to his side, every nail that is drove into his uh, body were all hard-hitting hits given unto him. In his crucifixion, there was more than just the nails 
But there was this hard, heavy hammer that they used to nail him to that wooden cross. They could have just tied him up with a rope. They could just have tied his arms with ropes, his legs with ropes, but they use a nail, but more so, they use a heavy hammer. A heavy hammer <coughs> was uh, hammered down into the palm, into his legs. Isaiah 53, verse 4, uses the word, He took up our pain. I want you to know every pain that you're feeling okay, in the inside of you could be your very own mistake, could be the mistakes of people. Every pain that he took, okay, every pain that you go through, he took up our pain. In which the kind of pain that he took up also involved the inner voice of harsh and unkind words we give to ourselves. Verse 4, Isaiah 53, He surely, He took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we consider Him punished by God, stricken by Him, and afflicted. Matthew chapter 8, 17, that, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He Himself took our infirmities. He took our infirmities. Self-criticism is about hitting oneself with a blow of a heavy hammer. It's about being hard to a self. But we don't have to beat ourselves up this morning because Jesus Christ this morning, the scripture says, He took up our pain. Jesus Christ took all the blows, okay, the hammering that you and I are supposed to be receiving, the hammering that, that you and I are supposed to take. Jesus Christ took for us on our behalf all the hard blows of life until the Bible tells us his flesh broke apart. We are supposed to take all the blows ourselves but Jesus our Savior and our Redeemer instead took it on our behalf go to the cross when you do find that voice that inner voice that critic inner critic criticizing you okay and telling you uh, all kinds of negative things about you when you find yourself in that situation go to the cross okay and lay it down before your Lord. See that on the cross, your Lord took all your pain, okay, took, took all the blows for you and I. The third thing I want to look at is God the Holy Spirit. And it is the understanding this morning about one of his fruit which is the fruit of kindness. In Galatians 5, uh, chapter 5, verse 22, 23, the scripture says there, but the fruit of the Spirit, the result of His presence within us is love, unselfish concern for others, joy, inner peace, patience, Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Nine fruit there, one of it is called kindness. Kindness has the picture of being gentle, sympathetic, forbearing, which usually this word comes with a smiley. Yes, this is about others, being kind to others. But this is also about being kind to yourself. It is treating oneself not in a harsh or hurtful or condemning way. 
but rather treating you, yourself, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, wonderfully made by God, rather than treating yourself with sympathy, with gentleness, with forbearance. In this very case, ask the Holy Spirit who is in you to let his fruit of kindness grow in you for yourself. Okay, grows in you, grows in your heart when you look at the mirror, when you look at yourself. Ask the Spirit of God to let His fruit grow in you, the fruit of kindness. Because when it grows in you, it will help to weed out self-criticism in you and to get you to see yourself as God sees you. And the Holy Spirit who lives in you, wants to do that for you. I want to close with the story of 1 Samuel. And this is a very familiar story. Chapter 30, verse 1 to verse 6 is about David. And the Bible tells us that uh, when David and his men were, were, were out, to war, the Amalekites came and the Amalekites came to uh, David's hometown and they began to uh, burn the city down, take all the women captives and, uh, and kill many and uh, great and small or didn't kill many but carried them away and went their way. When David and his men came back from war, they found out that uh, their families were all gone, their homes were all destroyed. And uh, what happened in verse 4, David and the people begin to lift up their voice and weep until there's no more tears to cry. And uh, what happened is that David's men begin to uh, uh, want to stone him and uh, because uh, the men begin to blame him for for all this that have happened, and the Bible says in verse number 6, but David there encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And we find that after he encouraged himself in the Lord his God, he began to seek God for direction, and God began to help him, and he managed to bring back all that was lost. But what I want you to see at a time of great uh, uh, discouragement at the crime of great defeat, the Bible says he encouraged himself in the Lord. So this morning, maybe you're sitting here and uh, I look at you and you look at me and we look at each other and all of you got a great smile on your face and handsome and beautiful and but in the inside of you uh, in your own room or and while you are in your car or in the bus or, uh, or in the bathroom, when you, when you are alone by yourself, uh, this voice, this voice of criticism is taking your past mistakes, taking your past uh, failures and then taking it and pointing it at you. Look, you are you. you. You, you, you are the one that and is blaming you for it. I want you to know uh, this morning that voice is not from God, the Holy Spirit. That voice is not in line with the word of God. Whatever voice or words that come from, it needs to be one that edifies and edify even uh, your own self. I want every head bow. This morning in the in the house of God, every head bow. I want you to know that our Father in heaven, He knows your name. He knows your name. He cares for you. And he wants you to 
when you do view yourself he wants you to take a step of faith he wants you to see yourself as he sees you he cares for you he knows your name and he wants your life this morning hallelujah to grow to be blessed this morning hallelujah Father, I pray that your love will fall upon each and every one of us. Your love is a perfect love, Father. It's a complete love. It's able to heal every heart, cleanse every heart. It's able to save every heart. Hallelujah. And I pray this morning that Lord that each and every one of us here will receive that perfect love that you have for us and will experience it as well in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I have a father let's stand to our feet he knows my heart I have a maker hallelujah before even time begin my life was in his hands he knows my name he knows my name He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls. He hears me when I call. I have a father. I have a father. He calls me his home. He called me his own. He will never leave me. He'll never leave me. No matter where I go. He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees cheer that falls and hears me when I call. He knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He each tear that falls hears me when I call He hears me when I call He hears me when I call He hears me He hears me when I call Let's give him a big clap this morning Sha la 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 ba Hallelujah, Ramande Beyondo Sunday. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to take Holy Communion and could this side come first and, and come and take uh, the bread and the cup. Amen. Okay. So, okay, man. This side can join in as well and. So we're going to serve Holy Communion and, and the bread in the cup is over there. You can cup up and
Okay, let's pray before we break the bread and drink of the cup. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you this very morning and we remember through scriptures what Jesus did for us 2,000 years ago and dying for us, took our place on the cross, allow his body to be broken and allow his the only thing that can redeem us that's the blood to wash us of our sin and Father we thank you uh, for your great love for us as we eat of the bread and drink of the cup we ask your blessing upon each and every one of us this morning Let's break the bread in two and let's eat of the bread. Let's drink of the cup. Amen. Your God bless all of you. And um, so if you go down, do social distancing, okay, and uh, go in the joy of the Lord. God bless all of you. Amen.